sadri wa yassirli amri wa hal uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli Before beginning my presentation for today's Juma I would like to welcome each and every single one of you with the Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace mercy and blessings of almighty Allah be upon each and every single one of you amen Now my dear brothers and online viewers the topic for today's Juma discussion is going to be Islamic history related the topic of today's discussion is going to be focused on how the Quran was preserved or the protection of the Quran in order for us to understand how the Quran was preserved how the Quran was protected we have to know that how it was protected which methods were taken who were the people involved when it came to the protection of the holy quran and what exactly material was used in order for us to know how the sahaba the companions of the prophet as well as other generations after him how did they preserve the quran which we have today so that would be my discussion for today's juma khutba Islamic history how the Quran was preserved now there are many ways that we can discuss about this particular topic one of the, i divided my lecture into three different parts the first part is the tech related to the technology of writing the second is the arabs had a tradition of memorization and the third part is what materials were used in order to record surahs and ayahs of the holy quran and what measures did the sahaba radhiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in take in order to preserve kalamullah the word of allah so let us begin by discussing about the first and foremost most important technology which was the technology of writing writing was known as a tool in makkah and medina even before the birth of the last and final messenger hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the arabs they had a tradition that if there was something which was very important and they wanted the general public to know what they would do was record this information in writing and display it to the public for everybody to see and the arabs most of them did not know how to read and write so those people who did know how to read and write would read the message to those people who did not know how to read and write and there are various examples and various evidences dalil in islamic history to show that the quran always had a written tradition that the quran was always put into writing the first example that i will give are the examples of surah al alaq We know that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was born in the year 570 CE and he became a prophet a nabi at the age, at the year of 610 CE which means the Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam became a rasul a prophet at the age of 40 and in this age of 40 Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he first encountered Hazrat Jibril alaihi salam in the cave of Hira And in this cave Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the first set of wahi the first set of revelation to the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him which are the first five ayats of surah al-alaq chapter number 96 verses number 1 to 5 which says ikra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq read and recite in the name of your lord who has created khalaq al-insan min alaq he who has created man from a single clot of blood alaka ikra wa rabbukal akram recite and your lord is most generous allazi allama bil qalam he who taught man by the pen allam al insana ma lam yalam he who taught man what man did not know now in these first five verses of surah al alaq hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being told allazi allama bil qalam he who taught man by the pen there are many the mu- muslim historians and the mufassirs of the holy quran they all agree that hazrat muhammad did not know how to read and write our prophet was the ummi which is also mentioned in the quran in surah ankabut chapter number 29 verse number 
So there were many Mufassirin such as Hazrat Imam Fakhruddin Al-Razi in his Tafsir known as Tafsir Al-Kabir as well as Imam Qurtubi Rahimahullah in his Tafsir, Tafsir Al-Qurtubi who say that when Allah says to Hazrat Muhammad Allah zi allama bil kalam it does not only mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught by the pen it also means Allah is telling the Prophet to seek help by the pen and we find in various hadiths that Hazrat Muhammad tells the same message to many Sahaba many Sahaba the Prophet told them seek help by the pen and a pen is used as a tool for writing the second evidence or the names of the Holy Quran itself. Like how we Muslims say that Allah has 99 names and attributes, 99 asma wa sifat, and that these 99 names and attributes, they describe who Allah is. Similarly, there are many names of the Quran which describe what the Quran is. Some of these names are Al-Kitab, Al-Furqan, Al-Tazkira, Al-Zikra, Ahsan Al-Hadith, Al-Tanzil, Al-Huda, Al-Mubarak, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Majid, Al Bayan, Al Shifa, Al Huda, Al Haq, and many other names are mentioned in the Holy Quran. One of these names of the Quran is Al Kitab. Hazrat Imam Abu Fazl Al Ragib, Rahimahullah, he has written a world famous dictionary of the Quran which is named Al Mufradat Fi Gaidi Bil Quran. And in this dictionary, Imam Ragib he says that Al Kitab means the Quran is a book which is complete in itself in writing. The Quran also sometimes refers to itself as Suhuf. <coughs> Allah says in the Quran in Surah Bayana, chapter number 98, verses number 2 and 3, Rasulu min Allahi suhufa mutahara, a messenger, Hazrat Muhammad, reciting purified pages, fiha kutubun qa'ima, in which are correct writings. This Arabic word Suhuf, it derives from the Arabic word Saf. Saf means a collection of written pages. And this, is, and this Arabic word Saf is the same word in, from which we get the Arabic word Mus'haf from. Mus'haf, which is a commonly used term to indicate the Holy Quran. Furthermore, there is the third evidence primarily in Surah Al-Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verses number 79 and 80. Now, if you open up Surah Al-Waqiyah, you're not going to see the evidence, the Dalil, directly in there. But if you read the history of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab and how he accepted Islam then the example of Surah Waqiyah can be used as evidence. Hazrat Imam Jalal uddin al-Sayyuti rahimahullah he has written a very important book on Islamic history known as Tariq al-Khulafa the history of the Caliphs talking about the four Khulafa Rashidun Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab Hazrat Usman ibn Affan as well as Hazrat Ali ibn Abi Talib and in the chapter under Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, Hazrat Imam Jalal uddin al-Sayyuti mentions about how Hazrat Umar accepted Islam. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, before converting to Islam, he actually wanted to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he picked up a sword and he started walking to Rasulullah's destination. A man stopped Hazrat Umar in the middle of the road and said, the, Oh Umar, what are you doing with a sword in your hand? Hazrat Umar replied to kill Muhammad, peace be upon him. The man then told Hazrat Umar, well, if you want to kill Muhammad, you might as well start with your own family first because your sister and her husband have accepted Islam. Hazrat Umar, after hearing about the conversion of his sister and her husband, he immediately went to his sister's house. And when he went to his sister's house, he saw his sister hiding what looked like a piece of paper under her thigh. Hazrat Umar told his sister, show me what you are hiding. And his sister told him, the O oh Umar, you cannot touch this copy because you are not purified. And she immediately recited the verses of Surah Al-Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verses number 79 to 80, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yamassahu illa mutahharun. None shall touch this, talking about the Holy Quran, none shall touch this except for those who are purified. Tanzilum mir Rabbil Alameen. It is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. Now, in the, this history, there are two things to be noted. Number one, Hazrat Umar was told that he cannot touch this piece of paper because he does not have purification, ablution, uju. And number two, Islamic history tells us 
that the copy which Hazrat Umar's sister had with her, it was a copy of some of the verses of Surah Taha, which is chapter number 20 of the Holy Quran. A second method of how the Quran was protected and how the Quran was preserved was the method of memorization, memory. The Arabs, they had this tradition of memorization. The, many of the Arabs during the time of Hazrat Muhammad, they did not know how to read and write. The Arabs used to be prideful of being called as illiterates. But what they did but is that since they did not know how to read and write, their tradition, their culture was to memorize information which the general public has to know. Now, the Arabs, they had a tradition of memorizing poetry. In the Holy Quran, the biggest surah, the longest surah in the Holy Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah has 286 ayats, 286 verses. But for some of the Arabs, they used to memorize perfectly, word for word, poetry which was longer than Surah Al-Baqarah. Thousands of lines of poetry the Arabs used to memorize. Perfectly, word for word, no mistakes. So, for some Sahaba, memorizing Surah Al-Baqarah was not a challenge for them. Because they already had this tradition of memorizing information. Memorizing poetry, memorizing literature, memorizing their names. As you know the Arabs, they have the names dating all the way back to their great, 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 great grandparents. Right? Now, after the method of memorization was taken place, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he died in the year 500 CE which in the Islamic calendar is the year 11 after Hijrah after the death of Hazrat Muhammad the protection of the holy Quran this responsibility was now put upon the sahaba the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the death of Hazrat Muhammad the first Khalifa of the Islamic world in the year 11 after Hijri was Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. Hazrat Abu Bakr was Khalifa from the years 11 to 13 after Hijra, which in the Christian calendar are the years 632 to 634 CE. Now, in the middle of Abu Bakr's Caliphate, in the year 12 after Hijra, in the year 633 CE, there was a battle known as the Battle of Yamama which was a battle between Abu Bakr and Khalid ibn Walid versus Musaylama ibn Habib, more commonly known as Musaylama Kazab, Kazab meaning a liar, because Musaylama Kazab claimed to be another Rasul after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And in this battle, Abu Bakr and Khalid ibn Walid, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, they had a population of 40,000. And Musaylama ibn Habib, Musaylama Kazab, his army population was 60,000. So the Muslims were outnumbered by 20,000 people. Amongst these 40,000 people who were in Khalid ibn Walid's army, 300 of them were Huffaz. 300 of them were Hafizul Quran. In this world today, we have millions upon millions of Muslims who have memorized the Quran completely by heart. Starting from Surah Fatiha all the way to Surah An-Nas. And these Muslims, they are given the title Hafizul Quran. But what is the meaning of the Arabic word Hafiz? Most of the time when we think about the Arabic word Hafiz, we think about a person who has memorized the complete Quran. But the technical meaning of the word Hafiz, the Sharia definition of the word Hafiz, it means protector. One of the names of Allah is Al-Hafiz, which means that Allah is the protector. No wonder Allah says in Surah Al-Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 9, Inna nahnu nazalna zikra wa inna lahu la hafizun. Allah says, we have revealed the reminder, reminder is the Holy Quran, and we shall be its protector. Now in this battle of Yamama, three, amongst the 300 Huffaz, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, he saw many Huffaz were dying quick in number. So Hazrat Umar then ran to Hazrat Abu Bakr and told Abu Bakr, the O oh Abu Bakr, there are many Huffaz who are dying in this battle of Yamama. I think it is best that we produce a physical copy of the Quran just in case all of the Huffaz were to die, we will not lose the Quran. Hazrat Abu Bakr at first, he was resistant. He told Hazrat Umar that why should we do something which the Prophet did not do. Hazrat Umar then told Abu Bakr, the O oh, Abu Bakr, this is beneficial for the Ummah. And eventually Hazrat Abu Bakr agreed 
and the first physical copy of the Quran in the world was produced. This physical copy, this physical Mus'haf was kept safe with Hazrat Abu Bakr until his death in the year six in the year 634 CE in the Islamic calendar in the year 13 after Hijrah. After the death of Hazrat Abu Bakr, the second Khalifa of the Muslim world was Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab. Hazrat Umar was Khalifa from the year 13 after Hijrah to 23 after Hijrah. In the Christian calendar, 634 CE to 644 CE, Hazrat Umar was Khalifa for 10 years. The responsibility of Abu Bakr's copy was given to Hazrat Umar until his death in the year 23 after Hijrah. After the death of Hazrat Umar in the year 23 after Hijrah, this copy of the Quran was given to his daughter, Hazrat Hafsa bint Umar. For those of our brothers who just came in, today's Juma Khutbah topic, we are discussing about Islamic history, how the Quran was protected, of how the Quran was protected. Now, as I, was, as I mentioned, that after the death of Hazrat Abu Bakr in the year 13 after Hijrah, the second Khalifa of the Muslim world was Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, who was Khalifa from the year 13 after Hijrah to the year 23 after Hijrah. So Hazrat Umar was Khalifa for 10 years. Now after the death of Hazrat Umar in the year 23 after Hijrah, the responsibility of the copy of the Quran which was produced by Hazrat Abu Bakr, it was given to the responsibility of Hazrat Umar's daughter Hafsa bint Umar. Now, the third Khalifa after Hazrat Umar died was Hazrat Usman ibn Affan who was Khalifa of the Muslim world from the year 23 after Hijrah to the year 35 after Hijrah which in the Christian calendar are the years 644 CE to 656 CE. Hazrat Usman was Khalifa for 12 years. Now, the history is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 6. Hadith number 4987 It's a hadith which has been narrated by Hazrat Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Hazrat Anas narrates that Hazrat Usman sent a message to Hazrat Hafsa saying that O oh Hafsa, send us the copy which you have with you so that we can make perfect copies of the Quran. Hazrat Hafsa, she agreed and she gave this copy of the Quran to Hazrat Usman who then after formed a small committee of four Sahaba. Ha Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he produced a committee of four Sahaba. These four Sahaba were, number one, Hazrat Zaid ibn Sabit al-Ansari. Number two, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubayd. Number three, Abdul Rahman Harid ibn Hisham. And number four was Hazrat Said ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. But Hazrat Usman, he also wanted a fifth Sahabi to be part of this committee and that fifth Sahabi was supposed to be Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. But unfortunately, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was not available to Hazrat Usman ibn Affan. Why? If we go back in history, during the time of Hazrat Umar's Caliphate, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, in the year 642 CE, in the year 21 after Hijrah, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, he wanted some Sahaba to go to the city of Kufa and teach Islam to the people of, to the Persians. Kufa, which is the city the Hazrat Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu is from. Now, amongst these Sahaba, Hazrat Umar gathered five, a population of 500 people. And amongst this population, he chose Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to be the main teacher for the people of Islam for the people of Kufa. Then, when Hazrat Usman ibn Affan was Khalifa, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was busy teaching Islam to the people of Kufa, but Hazrat Usman originally wanted him to be part of this committee because he knew that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud wrote down 70 surahs under the supervision of Hazrat Muhammad. But there is something interesting about this committee. And that is, if you look at the four Sahaba that Hazrat Usman selected to make copies of the Quran, one, three of them are from the Quraysh tribe. Abdullah ibn Zubair, Harith ibn Hisham, as well as Sayyid ibn al-As, all of them were amongst the people of Quraysh. Zayd ibn Sabit, radiallahu anhu, he was not a Quraysh member. He was amongst the Ansar. His full name was Zayd ibn Sabit al-Ansari. 
Ansar, for those brothers who may not, may not know, the Arabic word Ansar, it literally means helper. In the context of Islamic history, Ansar are those people who helped Hazrat Muhammad when he migrated from Mecca to Medina in the year 623 CE. And Hazrat Muhammad, after he migrated to Medina, he did not come back to Mecca until the year 6 after Hijrah. Now, why is this important? Why did Hazrat Usman choose four Sahaba, one of those Sahaba, sahaba being a Madinite, being from Medina, and three of those Sahaba being from the Quraysh? We have to remember that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was born in the tribe of Quraysh, and the sub tribe which he was born in was known as the Banu Hisham, and Hazrat Usman ibn Affan he was also from the Quraysh in the sub tribe of the Banu Umayyah, where the Ottoman Empire get their name from. Now, the Arabs they had many different tribes, and each tribe, despite the fact that they spoke. Arabic as their language, the style of Arabic was very different from each tribe. Even in Bangla, people in Dhaka speak Bangla different from the people of Silet. But the language is the same. Similarly, the Arabs, they had many tribes, and but they spoke Arabic very differently. Why did Hazrat Usman want Zayd ibn Sabit to work with these three other Sahaba who were from the Quraysh tribe, the same tribe that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was born, is because the Quran was revealed in the dialect of the Quraysh. The history is given in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 6, hadith number 4984, Hazrat Anas ibn Malik anhu, he narrates why Hazrat Usman chose this committee with three members being from Quraysh and one being from Medina. Hazrat Usman told Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubayr, the O oh, ibn Zubayr, if you differ with Zayd ibn Sabit in any utterance, any pronunciation of Arabic letters, re write it in the dialect of the Quraysh, because it is in the language of the Quraysh in which the Quran was revealed. And this actually did happen. Hazrat Zayd ibn Sabit, as well as Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubayr, they both disagreed with one word which is mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 248. And this word was Tabut. Hazrat Zayd ibn Sabit, he wrote this word as Tabu, ending with a Ha. And Abdullah ibn Zubayr wrote the same word as Tabut, ending with a Ta. This difference, the case, was brought to Hazrat Usman ibn Affan and Abdullah ibn Zubayr told Hazrat Usman, Ya Amirul Mu'mineen, O leader of the believers, me and Zayd are deferring on this one word. Can you correct us which pronunciation is in accordance to the dialect of the Quraysh? And Hazrat Usman confirmed that the way how Abdullah ibn Zubayr wrote it, it was correct. Ta'abut ending with a ta. Starting with a ta, ending with a ta. It is in this way, it was revealed to Hazrat Muhammad. The Quraysh pronounced it with the ending of Ta. And if you open Surah Baqarah, if you open Surah Baqarah, ayat number 248 today, you will see it says Tawabut ending with a Ta and not Tawabu ending with a Ha. This is thanks to the management of Hazrat Usman ibn Affan. Radiallahu anhu. Now, some people may ask, that Rafi, why is it that it was the Sahaba who arranged the copies of the Holy Quran? Why was there not a physical Mus'haf during the lifetime of Hazrat Muhammad himself? Now we have to remember that after the case was solved, after Hazrat Usman corrected which dialect the word is written in, the, these four Sahaba, again, Zayd ibn Sabit, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Harit ibn Hisham, as well as Said ibn al-As, they continued to make multiple copies of the Quran. And after those copies were completed, Hazrat Usman sent these copies to multiple Muslim countries and told the governments of those Muslim countries to make a committee themselves and make copies of the Quran, which naturally, if there are more copies of the Quran, that means that there are more Qurans available for the general Muslim public. More people have access to read the Holy Quran. Now, all we Muslims, we believe in all of the revelations 
which Allah has revealed to before he revealed the Holy Quran. The Jews, they say the Hazrat Musa salam, was revealed the Taurat, the Torah. And the Jews, they say that the Torah had 5,000 verses. These 5,000 verses which were revealed to Hazrat Musa salam, Allah revealed all 5,000 verses to Musa salam, all at once. The Holy Quran has more than 6,000 ayats. But these 6,000 ayats did not come all at once together. They came in stages. They came in portions. The Muslim historians say that the first ayat all the way to the last ayat, meaning from Surah Al-Alaq, all the way to what some Muslim scholars agree is Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 3 Al-Yawma Akmantu Lakum Deenukum The Muslim historians say that from the first verse to the last verse it took 22 years, 5 months and 14 days which we Muslims approximately say 23 years Now, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra chapter number 17 verse number 106 وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ tanzila, And we have revealed it the Holy Quran in stages. Now, just because there was no physical Mus'haf during the time of Hazrat Muhammad, we have to remember that it is impossible that there was a physical copy of the Quran during the Prophet's lifetime because revelation was still being revealed to him. The Prophet did not know any moment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal revelation, would reveal wahi to him. But when Hazrat Muhammad وسلم, was alive, he still supervised the individual copies that Sahaba had copied with them. It's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawood, Hadith number 786. It's a Hadith which has been narrated by the third Khalifa of Islam, Hazrat Usman ibn Affan. Hazrat Usman tells us in this Hadith, it was a regular practice of the Messenger of Allah that when a certain surah or a certain ayat would be revealed, the Prophet Muhammad would call the Sahaba who would write down the revelation and tell them to put this surah and this ayat in such and such place. Now from this hadith, we are given two pieces of important information. The first piece of information is, this hadith is narrated by a Sahabi who was the Caliph of the Muslim world and whose name is highly associated with the history of the Quran's preservation, with the history of how the Quran was protected. And number two, Hazrat Usman is telling us that when a certain surah or a certain ayat was revealed to Hazrat Muhammad, the Prophet would call the Sahaba who would write down the Holy Quran without any delay. But who are these Sahaba? Who were the Sahaba who wrote down the Quran for the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Some of these Sahaba are Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, Hazrat Usman ibn Affan, Hazrat Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hazrat Zaid ibn Sabit, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubayd, Hazrat Harith ibn Hisham, Hazrat Said ibn al-As, Hazrat Anas ibn Malik, Hazrat Abu Huraira, the three wives of Hazrat Muhammad, Hazrat Aisha bin Abi Bakr, Hazrat Khadija, as well as Hazrat Hafsa bin Umar, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas, Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Hazrat Ubay ibn Kaab, Hazrat Khalid ibn Walid, Hazrat Muad ibn Jabal, and many other Sahaba, they all were involved in writing down the revelations of the Quran when the Prophet needed Sahaba to write down surahs and ayats. Now, a person may ask the question that Rafi, if, why was the responsibility given to the Sahaba? Why did the Prophet ﷺ not tell the Sahaba himself to produce a physical copy of the Holy Quran? The ulama have answers for this. They say that in the Quran, when Allah says, Inna nahnu nazalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun, that we have revealed the reminder and we shall surely be its protector, this was part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah was going to use the Sahaba as a means to protect the Holy Quran. It is through the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Quran. And that is why we Muslims have to love the Sahaba. 
Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanvi, Rahimahullah, in his book Behishti Zewar, he said that if a person does not have complete love for the Sahaba, his Iman is incomplete. And this is mentioned in the Quran. Sahaba are called in the Holy Quran as Muhajirina wal Ansar. Anytime in the Quran where you see Muhajirina wal Ansar, Allah is talking about the Sahaba, Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Now, these Sahaba who wrote down, there were 43 regular Sahaba who wrote down the Quran for the Prophet. Like how we say that the two angels on our shoulder, these are called the Kiraman Katibin, those Sahaba who wrote down the Wahi, they were known as Katibin Wahi, the writers of revelation. Now, what did these Sahaba, what material did they use to write down the Quran? The Hadith speaks about various material being used to write down the Quran as well as the Hadith, the Sunnah. The Hadith mentions about Sahaba using the skin of animals, so goat, camel, cow. The Hadith speaks about how the Sahaba would sometimes use the bones of animals, primarily the bones of cow, guru, guru because of course we know that the, the bones of Guru is very big. There's a hadith which speaks about that the Sahaba used to write down some verses of the Quran on tree leaves, Ghasir Paka. There's some hadith which speaks about Hazrat Ali. He used to write down verses of the Quran in cooking pots. If any cooking pot was not put into use anymore, Hazrat Ali would use the available space on the cooking pot and write down verses of the Quran. We also have some hadith which speaks about paper being used as a material during the time of Hazrat Muhammad And the paper was made from the skin of goat, right? But Alhamdulillah, in our modern day, our modern day period, we have the Quran published on beautiful pages of paper, beautiful hard covers. But this was not the case, of course, during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as well as the generation of the Sahaba, the generation of the Tabi'een, as well as the generation of the Tabi Tabi'een, and going on, it was very expensive to make paper from the skin of goat. Goat, even today, goat is more expensive than other animals when we go to the markets. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we discussed today about the various methods which were used to protect the Quran. Number one, we spoke about how writing was used as a tool to write down the surahs and ayats of the Quran and then Sahaba would use the pieces of paper or any other material which they wrote down verses in as a way to help them with their memorization. Number two, we spoke about how the Arabs had a tradition of memorization. How the Arabs used to memorize poetry, thousands of lines of poetry, poetry longer than Surah Al-Baqarah. Hence, for some Sahaba, memorizing Surah Al-Baqarah was not a challenge because they memorized poetry much longer than Surah Baqarah. Number three, we spoke about Haz the Caliphate of Hazrat Abu Bakr in which it was Abu Bakr Siddiq who produced the first Musaf of the Quran. This Musaf was then given responsibility to Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab. After the death of Hazrat Umar, it was given to the responsibility of his daughter Hazrat Hafsa. Hazrat Hafsa led Hazrat Usman borrow this copy. Hazrat Usman then told Sahaba, those four Sahaba, to make copies of this Quran. And then after the copies of this Quran was made, Hazrat Usman sent this copy to multiple Muslim countries, told the Muslim governments to produce a committee of their own so that their committee can also make copies of the Quran. And we also spoke about how the Quran, what materials the Quran was written in. And Alhamdulillah, we Muslims are very proud that we Muslims are the only people on the face of the earth who can say that the book that we follow, this book has never been changed since the time it was first revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Torah, the Injil, the Suhuf Ibrahim, the Zabur, and all of the Wahis that which were revealed before the Quran, by the passing of time, humanity started to change those scriptures. The Bible that the Christians read today, the Bible has many editing in it. The Bible has been changed throughout history. And I'm a history teacher. I graduated with a degree in history. Anyone who studies history can never deny that the Bible has been changed. And I would like to end off my khutbah with a saying from a critic of Islam, who was a European critic of Islam. His name was 
Sir William Muir. Sir William Muir, he was a critic of Islam. He always used to bash <laughs> Islam and the Muslims. But being a critic of Islam, do you want to know what Sir William Muir said 200 years ago? What he said? Sir William Muir, despite being a critic of Islam, he said that the Quran is the only book. The Quran is the only book which has not been changed for more than 1200 years. He said this 200 years back. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.